Okay, let's hop right into this first one. As we go along, I'll try to explain to you why I feel like these are a little bit more tough. tough. They're a little tougher. The reason, it's not, we're not going to do them any differently. We're going to go to the same approach as we did yesterday. So my first question to somebody today will be, how do I, other than the tip, it says day seven indirect proofs, how do I know to do this proof indirectly? Say we're at the midterm, end of January. I put the given and the proof statement up. What's going to light up to you that says, oh boy, I better do this sucker indirectly? Okay, let's hear seven. How do I know to do this one indirectly? Um, the sign that says that it's not congruent. Perfect. That's pretty easy. Pretty easy notice right there. Hey, it's, I'm proving something's not congruent. I got to do this indirectly. All right, so we get our statements and reasons down like usual. However you write in your givens, that's up to you, but they all have to be written in on a test. All right, and the, we approach it differently by our second step, which is what's called our assumption. We're going to assume something is true and it's going to lead us to a bad spot. In this proof in particular, what are we going to assume is true? I want to make sure this part is clear as well. What are we assuming is true in this proof? Four, what are you going to assume is true? Yes, you assume the opposite of the give of the proof statement. Opposite of the proof statement. And our goal contradict one of the givens. Here's why I think today's are going to be tougher. It's not as clear to which one you should contradict. Usually, right? Yesterday. Here you go. Let's bring up something from yesterday here. Okay, here was a homework one from last night. It was easy for us to identify which given we're going to contradict because it was always the not equal one, right? I don't have a not equal one in the givens, but we still have to contradict one of them. So this is what we're going to have to put our heads together and say, all right, out of those two, ABC scalene and AE and CD are altitudes, which one do we think it would be easier to try to contradict? We still have to contradict one of them. I know it doesn't say not, but I still have to contradict one of them. Any uh, thoughts on which one you'd prefer to contradict? Matt? ABC scalene. Scalene, I like it. How do you contradict something that's scalene? And I know the easy response would be what? Say it's not scalene. What term do we have for that in uh, triangle units here that if it's not scalene, it could be? If you prove this triangle ABC's isosceles, are you contradicting that it's scalene? Yes, you are. So does everyone see what we're doing in this proof? Get ABC isosceles. Yes, that's our goal in this proof. All right, here we go. And this is the second reason today why I think these are tougher. What you need to do to contradict is going to be tough to do. You're going to have to have your uh, proof A game right now. How do I get triangle ABC as isosceles? Remember what I already have. I have AE congruent to segment CD, and I have my altitudes with me. What makes a triangle isosceles? So let's get two sides or two angles. And usually the only way we get sides or angles equal is if what are equal first? Two triangles. So we got to make a class decision. What two triangles? What are the two triangles I'm going to need to prove either sides or angles? Look at the information you have. AE equals CD. I have those two segments already there for me. I also have... Altitudes, which form what? Right angles. So take a look. I have right angles here and here, and I have right angles here and here. Do we have triangles that maybe we can prove congruent using this information? I don't want, I, don't give me two triangles I know nothing about. Give me two triangles that have the right angles 
and maybe have A, E, and C, D as their sides. Somebody is about to make a huge class decision here. Huge class decision. All right. Name a pair of triangles that we want to prove congruent. And it better lead us to full side A, B, and B, C, or full angle A and C. All right, big decision coming up. Big decision. Nine, big decision. Say those again. A, B, C. A, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right here. And what was your other one? You see it, okay. Did anybody have the other pair on top that they wanted to do? Triangle B, D, C and triangle B, A, E, those two. You could have done those two. The one, See everyone, see the overlapping ones on top? You could have done those two. All right, Shane, are you ready? I'm glad you picked those because those are honors level ones. The other two, the other pair are, are going to be too easy. We picked an honors level one here. Good. I don't know if people will be thanking you at the end, Shannon, but I am thanking you now, and that's the important piece. What do we already know about these two triangles? A, E, and C, D are congruent, right, by our assumption? And they also have right angles in them. Better throw that in my proof because uh, I see too many of you guys forget that. Angle A, D, C, and angle A, E, C are right angles. Unfortunately, it's not perpendicular lines form right angles like we're always accustomed to. How do I know the right angles there? Let's talk. Uh, who's up? Eight. How do I know the right angles? Thank you. Definition of an altitude. Oh, we have an eight. Everybody settle down. I'll do the teaching. De or altitudes form right angles. I like that reason as well. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. You guys have no idea what you're in store for here. No idea. You're just like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, I got right angles. I got a side. This is going to be easy. What else do I have in this? these two triangles? Don't get scared yet. Don't get scared yet. Find something else for me. I wrote that, that they are right angles. I have a, two sides equal to each other. What else? Do you see anything else? Oh, three. Hi, Eva. Hi. Thank you. Oh, a little reflexive action. Oh, okay. We have to set ADC and AEC together. We can. They don't have to be right after each other, Paul. Relax. As long as it's sure, we can. Is everyone all right? So we satisfy Paul's hunger back there? Do it now, he says. Right? Do it now. It doesn't have to come right after Paul, but it can come. Yes. Yeah, you're fine. You thought you were going to get me with another mistake. Oh, no. Oh, no. Get off the tracks when the train's coming through. Right angles are congruent. Guys, we got two sides and an angle, don't we? We should be ready to roll. Here you go. Let me just draw out triangle AEC. AEC. I got a right angle at E. A little reflexive action at AC. And I had uh, AE congruent to DC. There I go. Got a problem with my diagram? Yeah. Yeah? You better not say that. What's wrong with side angle side? Let's first start there. Two sides and an angle. What's wrong with side angle side? Come on, what's wrong with it? Ang right angle's not in between. Right? So side angle side out. Yes, you're an embarrassment if you say side side angle at this point in the year to me. Right? No side side angle. Correct? That's out. Oh, what type of triangle is it? 
Right. Oh, it's a right triangle. And I believe we had a fifth method, a final method that only worked for a right triangle, which was what? HL. There you go. It's going to be HL. That's why this one was so tough. Thank you, Shanna. Thank you. Uh, I'm not ready for HL, though. There was something you need to do before you say they were congruent by HL. Eva, this is only used in what type of triangles? You better state in your statements that you have right triangles then. So, Paul, you didn't even need the right angles congruent in an HL proof. So, even relax more. Okay? But we'll keep it in there just for you. Yes, HL in an indirect proof. Wow. Ready? Triangle ADC and triangle AEC, right? ADC, AEC, in order doesn't matter at this point, but our right triangles. Anybody remember our reason? Right triangles have right angles. Nice. Now you can say they're congruent by HL. After you tell me they're right triangles. Wow. We're not even close to contradicting yet, huh? Triangle ADC congruent to triangle AEC. HL. All right. Now, just I know it's been a couple minutes here. Why did I want the triangles congruent? Remember, I'm trying to get it to be isosceles, right? How does getting them congruent make it isosceles? Name two corresponding parts right here that are now congruent that'll make this triangle isosceles. 12, name a pair of uh, parts that make it isosceles now. Angle BAC. Yep. Angle Good, the angles, the bottom two angles. Great job. BAC, BCA. So angle BAC. Congruent to angle BCA, CPCTC. Now it's isosceles. Ooh, finally, huh? We're going to have a 10-stepper again. Triangle ABC is now isosceles. How do we know? How do we know it's isosceles? Uh, 20. How do we know this is isosceles? Well, that would just say that would that would tell me if the sides were equal. I just want to know, Jonathan, how do I know at this point in the proof this is isosceles? What did you what, what did we just prove in the previous step? Uh, That's all I need. Two congruent angles imply. Isosceles triangle. Good. Jonathan, are you a shorts all year round here? You're that kid? Yeah. Are you really? Okay. I respect. 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 So in the middle of January, we're going to be rocking the shorts, right? And you have no... Do you have nerves down in your legs that you feel cold or no? A little? A little? Don't you get cold? I'm sweating I, I'm, I'm envious because I'm, I'm freezing all the time. I would rather go to sleep in an 80 degree room versus a 50 degree room. All right. All good. Oh, whoa. We got still got step 10. What did we just do to one of the givens here? We contradicted it. Yes. Great. We did. So that means what about our assumption? It's wrong. It's false. So the opposite, AE not congruent to CD is true. Assumption led to a contradiction. And then you guys tell me the steps, right? Always your, always, I say always, 
if you put your givens in step one, you could always put your assumption in step one. But if you put your givens in step one, and then usually the step before nine, in this case, questions. We're going to do another one together because these are going to, these are getting tough. Going. So thanks, Shannon. We appreciate you picking those triangles. Yes. If you picked the top two, it would have been like angle, angle, side. We were done. But good. I'm, we we got to review HL because it's been forever. All right, let's do this. Whew. I don't know if we're going to like this one either, but let's do it. Uh, one is congruent to two. AD does not bisect. Okay, let me start off with the assumption. What's my assumption for this proof? Uh, let's hear from number one. There we go. Assumption. Um, line A, B is congruent to um, C, A. Yep. A, B congruent to C, A. You should already have a couple markings on your diagram showing angle one and two are equal. And also A, B congruent to C, A. My next question before we start, what given are you going to contradict? Look at your two givens. Which one am I going to contradict? This one should be a nice one here. 16, which two, which out of the two givens are you going to contradict? You got one congruent to two and you got AD does not bisect CAB. Okay, if I'm going to contradict that, I got to show one's not equal to two. And I'm not too sure how I can do that. I always want to contradict the call the not one. Okay, the not one. So I'm going to contradict AD does not bisect CAB. How are you guys going to contradict that one? By saying? How do we contradict that statement? What do we need to prove in our proof here? What's the goal going to be of our proof to contradict it? Say AD does bisect CAB. And I know we've only really done one of these type proofs in the past. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get that contradiction? How are we going to get AD bisect CAB? Caitlin, go ahead. What do I need to show? What am I going to have to prove to you guys to tell you that AD is a bisector? Yeah, we need to show that these two here, DAB and DAC are equal. If those two are equal, AD is a bisector. Oh boy, how are we going to get those two angles equal? So is everyone all right with our plan? If I just put dots here right now, I got to need those two equal, please. I need those two equal. All right, how? Usually we will have to do what to get the angles equal? Prove triangles, yeah. All right, so let's try to prove those two triangles. All right, I'm just, instead of saying the letters here, and I'm not going to put this in my proof, this is just helpful for me to teach you guys here. I got to get triangles one and two equal, congruent to each other. And you have a pair of sides already. You have a pair of sides, right? All right, where are we going from here? What else can you tell me about the triangles? Okay. What's up, Matt? Hi, how you doing? Uh, CD is congruent to DB because... The other triangles I saw. Say that. Say those two segments again. CD and DB. Okay, everybody. Everyone ready? Here's what Matt's saying. Because one and two are equal, and they're in the same triangle, the sides across must be equal. BD congruent to DC. Everyone agree? And that's actually a great job, Matt, because very few students see that. They see the big one as isosceles, and they use that one instead. 
But yes, the smaller ones isosceles. So BD is congruent to DC in a triangle. Congruent sides are across from congruent angles. Now you have two pairs of sides. We're almost there getting those triangles congruent, right? I have two pairs of sides. See anything else? I know it's not the way, it's probably not drawn the way you like usually see it, but it's still there. Hi, Claire. Um, angle ABC is um, congruent to angle ACD. You are correct. And then you're going to do subtraction. Substitution to do side angle side. That's fine. Go ahead and get after it. I just want to do this in shorter and time too. But yes, you are. I'm, I, I'm not discounting. You are 100 percent correct, Claire. And then you can do side angle side. I just for time's sake and make sure you guys get enough practice with me here. Something a little shorter, Serena. You can say AD is reflexive and do side side. Okay, AD. I know it's not in the position you guys usually see it, but it's a shared side. All right. Claire, are you mad at me because I'm not doing yours? No. Okay, good, because I wouldn't care. AD equals AD. That's jokes, Claire, jokes. Reflexive. And yes, now I have side, side, side. Hey, Jonathan, you a coat guy? Because usually the short kids aren't uh, coat kids either. Oh, I'm not asking if you have them or own them. Do you use them and wear them in the cold weather? <laughs> what the heck's that mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like today, you leave school. You go and just what you're wearing now? Well, okay, what's the cutoff point? If it's like 37 or 38, probably not. But if it's around like 28, I'll wear it. Wow. Okay. And you just don't get cold. <laughs> okay. I wish, I don't know. I got to be all bundled up. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm bundled up. ABD congruent to... ABD congruent to A D A C D side side side. This is like turning into a pseudo interview Wednesday, Jonathan, right? What grade's your brother in, Jonathan? Yeah. It's nice. What's his name? Jacob. Jacob. Good. What elementary school did you go to? Eagle. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all five years? <laughs> nice. Well, all six years, excuse me. Maybe seven for a couple of you in here. Too right. Two harsh? Too harsh for some of you? Too harsh? Too harsh? Too harsh? The seven year, the seven year elementary school plan? <laughs> Sorry, too harsh? Just couldn't get away eating that paste in kindergarten, huh? Just couldn't move on from it. All right, that paste tastes too good for you. All right. B A now I have, I have the triangles congruent. Those angles I needed. B A D congruent to C A D by C P C T C. And now that I have those two angles congruent, I know AD is a bisector. Going back to what Caitlin told us, AD is now a bisector because those two angles are equal. All right, so AD does bisect CAB. I'm just concerned about what we're going to write in the reasons. I don't want definition of a bisector. You tell me it's a bisector and saying definition that doesn't work like that. 
Why does it bisect? How do I know? What did you prove? Hi, Mahmoud. Yeah, just write the two angles that are equal. That's good enough for me to know why you know it's a bisector. BAD congruent to CAD. Yep. And now I have a what? I think I just did something with one of the givens, right? I have a contradiction. So my assumption is false, meaning AB is not equal to CA. Assumption led to a contradiction. What do we got? One and seven are your contradictions. Questions? All right, it's time for me to let go here, let you loose. And unfortunately, I'm letting you loose on a beast here. It doesn't look like much. I will give you at least one hint so you don't stress yourselves out. Which given are you going to try to uh, contradict? The not equal one. And you're going to contradict it by proving what? MA is congruent to AT. So you need to get MA congruent to AT. And here's my hint so you don't stretch yourselves out. You are not going to be able to prove triangles congruent. You got to do it some other way. Some other way you need to find out why MA and AT are equal without using congruent triangles because it's not possible. So I don't want you guys wasting the rest of class trying to prove triangles congruent when it's not going to happen. All right. That's all I got for you. Get after it in your group. Call me over if you're all stuck. You got to get MA congruent to AT without proving triangles congruent. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Parallel lines coming back.